I was reading the Bible last night. Oh yeah? I read some interesting passages. Really? Which ones? Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Ah, the new commandment that Jesus gave to the disciples. What did you find interesting about it? Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Oh, was there something in Joshua that connects with John? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Oh, so you're just listing them off. Alright then. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Uh-huh. Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who seek refuge in Him. Uh-huh. Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Uh-huh. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she also defiles her father's holiness and must be burned to death. Uh-huh. I said, if a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she also defiles her father's holiness and must be burned to death. Oh, is there something you don't understand about that passage? Uh, never mind. Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord is to be put to death. The entire assembly must stone them. Uh-huh. Uh <clears throat> I will let loose among you the beasts of the field, which will bereave you of your children and destroy your cattle. And reduce your number so that your roads will lie deserted. Next. <clears throat> and Joshua took it, and its king, and all its cities, they struck them with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the people who were in it. He left none remaining. I notice that you're not reading the verses in their entirety. Are you just doing that for the sake of brevity? What on earth is wrong with you? What do you mean? Why are you not complaining about me taking the Bible out of context? Because you're not taking the Bible out of context. Taking the Bible out of context would be reading Joshua 10 and then claiming that Christians are commanded to conquer cities and exterminate their enemies, which of course the Bible doesn't say. Oh yeah? What about this? And now, O oh Lord God, you are God, your words are true, and you deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. Okay, what about them? Do I really need to explain how these verses illustrate a contradiction in God? Actually, one is an expression of joy, and the other is an expression of lamentation, as explained in the surrounding passages. Suggesting that these verses illustrate a contradiction in God is an example of taking the Bible out of context. Anything else? Because of the suffering your enemy will inflict on you during the siege, you will eat the fruit of the womb, the flesh of the sons and daughters the Lord your God has given you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh? What do you mean, aha? Uh -huh. How can you casually shrug off a verse that is so clearly immoral? Because I don't see it that way, and you don't either. What are you talking about? Of course I see it as immoral. You're an atheist, are you not? Yeah. Well, then you have no concept of morality. What? Where did you get that idea from? You deny the existence of God, or to go full Ravi Zacharias, you deny the existence of moral lawgivers, which means you deny the existence of moral law, which is what morality is. So the only way that you can object to the immoral language of the Bible is to take yourself out of the context of your own beliefs. First of all, that is absurd. And second of all, atheism is about a lack of belief. Which means absolutely nothing in the context of rational discourse. Oh, the irony of that coming from me. Well, in the context of honesty, this is how atheists define themselves. It's exactly how I identify as a non-stamp collector. There is no such thing as a non-stamp collector. We are not defined by what we lack belief in, we are defined by what we do believe in, resulting in us lacking belief in what is contrary to it. I lack belief in Zeus because I believe in Jesus. You lack belief in God because you believe gods do not exist. To say otherwise is to remove yourself from the context of consistency. No other verses? As a straw man of new atheism, I am not interested in understanding your position, but merely to ridicule it. Also, I'm all out of content for the subject. Oh well. But before we go, let me ask you one thing. Sure, shoot. What context do you have to read all those passages and not have an attack of moral conscience? Simple. The context, as revealed in proper exegesis, or drawing out of the scripture, is that God is the righteous and absolute sovereign of the fallen universe and of sinful humanity. 
He is the king on his throne, doing and commanding whatsoever seems good to him, and part of what seems good to him is doing and commanding things that we sinful people may not necessarily like. That sounds repugnant. And what exactly is the context of that statement? Ugh, never mind. Don't forget to like or dislike this video, add it to your favorites, or share it if you really liked it. Leave a comment below, feel free to follow me on Twitter, Gab, AskFM, and Facebook. Subscribe and click on the bell to get future updates. And if you think my content is worth financial support, a donation to my Patreon is greatly appreciated. Until next time, take care and Godspeed.